Hey everyone, this is Evolve Yoga One. Welcome. Yoga is all about connecting the mind and the body. You just have to move to feel better and to get healthier. We're gonna take you through a bunch of different postures and series, and we're gonna give you modifications, starting with mod one, which is the easiest, and work our way to mod three, which will be your most challenging. And we have some people here to help us out, our friend Ivan, he's gonna be your mod one. So if you've never done yoga before, and you're really tight in your body, you're gonna look to Ivan. That's me. How are you doing today? Awesome, you? Yeah, good, you ready to breathe? I am. Good, even if you just sit here and breathe the whole time, you're doing fantastic. All right. Back here we have Ryan. How are you doing today, Ryan? Ready to move. <laughs> he's ready to move. So he's got these hockey hips, right? So if you're a little bit tighter, maybe you've done a little yoga and your flexibility is about, a, what would you say your flexibility is on a scale of one to 10? Uh, four, room for improvement. For oh, sure. awesome. So if you're at a four to 10, we're gonna go to Ryan right here. And then we have the beautiful <laughs> Raylan. <laughs> this is your mod three. So if you're uber flexible and you were just born with those nice long hamstrings, you're gonna look to Raylan. She's gonna be your mod three. All right, you're good to go? Yeah, let's get started. So let's have a great time. Again, the whole thing about yoga is practicing body awareness. So if something doesn't feel right, you're just gonna mod down. If it feels like you could do a little bit more, you're gonna evolve up. If there's any confusion about anything that you're doing, you're gonna peek at the tutorials where I'll be to help you out and give you more technique and information about what we're doing. All right, let's get going, you guys. So we're gonna start with a breathing exercise. The difference between yoga and fitness breathing is that we keep the mouth closed the entire time during yoga. So we're gonna start in mountain position, which is kind of your foundation posture for all of yoga. So bringing your feet just hip distance apart, your nose is pointing forward, and you're gonna reach your arms beside you, externally rotating the shoulders. And from here, you're just gonna practice closing the mouth and breathing in and out through the nose. So go ahead, close your eyes, and just start to move inwards and hear your breath. You're gonna rest the tip of your tongue just behind the top row of teeth, and you're gonna to start to invigorate the breath by constricting the vocal cord at the back of the throat. So the breath sounds a little bit more vigorous. It almost sounds like you're snoring with your mouth closed. So allow yourself to get uncomfortable with the sound of your breath. As you stand here, you're actively pushing your feet down in towards the floor. And even here, you're engaging your core, so the navel is drawing towards the spine. Your breastbone is lifting up towards the ceiling, and you're hearing your breath come in and out through the nostrils. And the thing about yoga is that it's important that you can breathe throughout every single posture. Good, this is mod one. Ivan doing a really good job with the breathing. Great. And now we're gonna move into a series trying to keep this breath invigorated throughout the entire set of postures. So go ahead, open your eyes, and we're gonna reach the arms up overhead. And then as you exhale, a little micro bend into the knees, you're gonna hinge at the hips, scoot the chest forward as the arm reaches back. And then you're gonna pulse your chest. So you're gonna lift up, and now you're gonna step into a plank position. And we're just gonna hold here. So the idea of holding here is just to, again, invigorate that core right away, activating all of the muscles in the front line of the body, and here in your breath. Actively pushing down into the feet, drawing the navel into the spine, and really pushing into the hands. This is your mod three. And if it's a little bit too much, you're gonna drop the knees to the floor and just hold here, accessing all those muscles in the arms by really pushing the hands into the floor. Nice. And now from here, we're gonna scoot the hips up and back, and we're gonna come into that token yoga posture, downward facing dog. So go ahead, lift those hips up towards the ceiling. You're basically making an upside down V with your body, right? Don't forget about the breath, so continue breathing in and out through the nose. Now for most of us, our hamstrings are super tight. So we're gonna keep a bend into the knees like Ryan here, he's our mod two. You see that the spine is nice and long. Good, now the important part about downward dog, the fingers are spread, the crease of the wrists are pointing forward. Good, and the hips are lifting up towards the ceiling. This is your mod two. Good, holding here for one more breath, great. And now from here, we're just gonna start to walk the dog. So we're just gonna start to alternate one heel to the floor at a time. Again, moving really slowly with your breath. So as you inhale, you're coming up under the ball of one foot. Exhale, trying to release that heel towards the floor. This is great. And Ivan is breathing beautifully in and out through his nose. This is your mod one. Great. And then slowly, just coming forward into a tabletop position. So with awareness, come to bring your knees onto the floor, hands are underneath the shoulders. We're just gonna warm up the spine. So on an inhale, you're gonna lift your tailbone up towards the ceiling as you draw the chest forward, extending through the spine. 
Now as you exhale, you're gonna bring the tops of the feet onto the floor and you're gonna round through the spine, pushing into the hands. And now moving with the breast, so curl the toes, lift the sit bones, draw the breastbone forward, inhale. And then exhale, coming back into that spinal flexion. Really pushing through the hands, rounding through the spine, breathing into your back body. Great. And continue. The important part here is you're just moving with your own breath, right? You can take this as slow or as quickly as you want following your own breath. We all have different cadence of breath. Great. This is mod one, a little bit less movement into the spine, but still articulating from the sits bones all the way up through to the crown of the head. Great. And now just coming into a neutral position. So coming into that neutral tabletop position, we're going to do a C curve. So we're going to laterally flex the spine. So bring your right shoulder towards your right hip. Good, and then come back to center, and then on the exhale, find the other side. So again, before we move into this series of postures, we wanna make sure that all the movements of the spine are warmed up. The extensors, the flexors, and our lateral flexion of the spine. Good. And then just coming back into a neutral spine, lifting the hips up and back, coming back into your downward facing dog. Great. Once you get to this downward dog, we're gonna cleanse the breath. Take a big inhale. I want you to open your mouth and make a ha sound exhale. <sighs> Good. And all that is doing is just releasing the tension around the jaw. So as soon as we close and grimace our teeth and make this scrunchy face with our lips and with our eyes, we start to hold all this tension around the jaw, which actually creates tension around the spine. So right now, see if you could actually take an inhale, everyone. Open the jaw, just relax. <sighs> exhale. And you'll feel the sense of relaxation move through the whole body. Great, and now looking forward as slow as you need to, you're just gonna step your feet forward between your hands. Keeping the feet hip distance apart, take as much time as you need to get there. Once you get there, lift and extend the spine, come up halfway, exhale to pulse. Leading with the breastbone, circle the arms back up overhead, big inhale, breath. Exhale, back into your mountain posture. Cleanse the breath in between, take a big breath, you guys. Big inhale, let all of that go, big exhale. Good. Coming into warrior posture, so we're gonna take a big step back with the right foot. Left knee is tracting over your second and third toe. You're gonna reach those arms up overhead, door as I flexion of the hands, and we're holding here. Now by door as I flexing the hands, it keeps the wrist joints limber and helps minimize arthritic pain. If it starts to cause strain, release. Let go and then come back. Practice awareness with your body. And then from here, making sure that the core is engaged, so making sure that the navel is pulled in, if it feels too much, you maybe you need to modify and come into more of a mod one. So we got more of a bend into that back knee, less distance between the feet. Good. How are you doing here, Ivan? Awesome. I know it's hard to talk in balance. <laughs> Good. If this is difficult on your shoulders, feel free to lower them. Put your hands on your hips for less strain and more balance. Good. Take one more breath. Ryan's smiling. <laughs> Good. So the difference here between mod three and mod two is there's just less dorsiflexion in the hand. Ryan's not quite there yet. We're just gonna have less dorsiflexion in the hand. Again, using this as a benchmark, once we actually get that flexibility into our external rotators, one day we're gonna have those hands in complete dorsiflexion. Take one more breath, you guys. Big inhale, big exhale. Great. And now to come out of these, just push into that front foot, drive that right foot back to join the left, and relax down into your mountain posture. Take a big inhale, cleanse the breath, big exhale. Good. So mountain posture, we use this as a transition tool just to reset the body so you feel grounded again, you find your feet, you find your breath, and then we go to the other side. So let's start to step the left foot back this time into that warrior posture. Arms are up overhead, doors, I flexion of the hand. That left foot is reaching towards an imaginary wall behind you, and those right toes are pointing forward. And the action is in the feet here, so really push your feet down into the floor. What happens when we do this is we feel this kinetic energy rebound through the body. So you feel this transfer of energy moving through the body all the way up through to the crown of the head. And the idea here is while we're holding this static position is to maintain the breath. So check in for a second, see where your breath is at. Notice if you hold your breath when the body is challenged. If you do, let go and breathe and open. Now again, if all this is just going too fast and you need a little bit more information, check your tutorials to find that exact technique that we're looking for. Good. Take three more breaths here, big inhales, big exhales. 
Inhale, push into the feet. Exhale, navel to spine. So every breath is an opportunity for core activity. Take one more breath, you guys. Let me hear you breathe. Great. And then at the bottom of that exhale, draw the belly in, use your core, step back to the top, reaching your hands down by your side, mountain posture. Big inhale, let it go, big exhale. Let it go, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan loves yoga, he's smiling still, this is good. Take a big inhale, big exhale, let it go. Great. We're gonna move into this pyramid posture. So starting with your hands beside you, step your right foot back. And the idea here is to actually have that right heel pushing into the floor. The left knee is bent. You're gonna hinge from the hips and just fold forward. Really accessing the backs of those legs. So if you have a little bit more range of motion, that left leg is actually gonna straighten. Yeah, that's it. And you're gonna hinge from the hips here. And we're gonna check in with the hamstrings. We're gonna make sure that there's no pulling in or around the knees. Good. So just bend that knee just a little bit. We never want to hyperextend the knee. Good. So even if you're super flexible, as Raylan's showing us here in Mod 3, we still want to make sure that we're not hyperextending the knees. We want to always keep that microband, keeping the knees safe and healthy. Find your breath. Big inhales. Breathing exhales. Good. And then from here, we're going to transition into a balanced position. So you're going to bend that front knee, transfer your weight, and just move into an airplane position, trying to lift that right leg up to 90 degrees. Dorsi flexing that back foot. So really drawing the toes to the shin bone of that right foot. And now find what's happening to your core. So keep drawing the navel in. Draw the front ribs in. Good. And continue breathing. So this one, Mod 1 looks a little bit different. We're just kind of testing the waters, right? We're kind of tapping that right foot up and down. Good. Just coming up for a balance and then pausing, lifting back up, dropping the toe back down. Great. And then slowly changing, safely stepping that right foot back to join the left, coming back into your mountain posture. Let's cleanse the breath, everybody. Take a big inhale. Let it go. Big exhale. And then we'll go to the other side. So stepping that opposite foot back, driving that heel into the floor, reach the arms back, doors, I flexion of the hand. Start to hinge forward from the hips. And the idea here is one day that right knee is gonna be straight. But maybe today you keep that right knee bent. Check in with your body right now and really understand the difference between a stretch and a strain. If you're holding your breath, more than likely you've gone too far. You're pushing yourself. So make sure you can hear your breath while you're moving into these postures that are challenging our flexibility. So if we look at Ryan, our mod two back here, he's got a nice bend into the knee that's just gonna protect the back of that leg. And the idea here is that action in that left heel. So really pushing this left heel down into the floor, getting right into the back of the legs. Good. There's this little bit of different angle in the hands. So we're not complete dorsiflexion. The fingertips are just reaching back and we're spreading the fingers nice and wide opening through this whole front fascia line. Staying here for a few more breaths and moving now into that transition into that airplane posture. So take a little micro bend into that front knee and the breath is gonna get you here. So big inhale, start to slowly transition. And if you're here and this left leg is just two inches off the floor, that's perfect. It's all about working in your limitations and just accepting where you're at today. This is mod one here. So he's just testing the waters, right? We're just tapping that left foot up and down Balancing, good, at your own pace. Doors, I flexion of this back foot again. We're trying to keep those hips square. So rotate that left hip down. If you're in mod three, we're still looking for symmetry in the pelvis. Draw the front line in, lift the chest forward. Good, breathing for one more breath, you guys. Great, and now coming out with awareness. So bend that front knee, step the feet back together. You're back into your mountain position. Everybody breathe, take a big inhale and just let it go, big exhale. Good. And then we're going to transition down onto the floor. So reach those arms up overhead. Keep your shoulders down and back and then hinge forward from the hips, leading with the breastbone. A little pulse here. Lift up and then step right into your plank position. Now we're going to hold here again, again, just building some strength into the front body. And use your feet. So actively push your feet down into the floor. Spread the fingers and push through the hands. In mod two, there's a little micro bend into the knees. Mod one, the knees are all the way onto the floor. And then we're going to transition. This almost looks like a push-up as we come down towards the floor. So you're going to keep your elbows tucked in towards the ribs. You're going to lower the chest to the floor. From here, we're going to come into an upward dog. So all 10 toenails are on the floor. Back of the neck is long. 
push into 10 toes, push into the hands. And now into downward dog. So use your core, draw your belly in, lift the hips up and back, and slowly transition into that upside down V position. Great, once you get here, let's cleanse the breath. Take a big inhale, big exhale, let it go. We're gonna come forward back into your plank position. I'm gonna move this time all the way down towards the floor and practice this cobra. So fantastic movement for the back body. Slowly lower all the way down towards the floor. From here, you're gonna reach your arms beside you like airplane wings. Reach those thumbs up towards the ceiling, spread the fingers, and now practice lifting the toes and the hands up off the floor. Again, really getting into that back line, squeezing the shoulder blades together, reaching the toes back, thinking of that whole posterior chain, completely active, from the calves, to the hamstrings, to the glutes, to the muscles between the shoulder blades. And again, with mod three here, she's got a little bit more extension. The back of the neck stays long. Tuck your chin just a little bit. Good, and you're actively pushing your hip bones down into the floor, making sure the navel is pulled in. Now, mod one, we're still getting these extensors working, keeping his legs on the ground while moving his torso up and down. Squeezing the shoulder blades together. This is awesome. And exhale. Great. And then again, coming out of these with a lot of awareness. So slowly lower everything back down towards the floor. Good. And just push up onto your hands and your knees. Cleanse the breath here. Take a big inhale. Let it go. Exhale. Really move these postures with a lot of awareness, focusing on alignment. And when we learn to align the body, we're able to practice things more safely in terms of our day-to-day -day activities and into the rest of our Evolve programming. So slowly come down to lie on your back. So come onto your right hip and come to lie on your back. And we're gonna practice some extension movements here. So coming into that bridge position, bend your knees, lower down towards the floor, palms face up to the ceiling. And then you're gonna leave your hands down on the floor and start to lift your hips up towards the height of your knees. From here, we're really accessing that back line. So we're working the posterior chain. By pushing your feet down into the floor, we're activating the backs of the legs, the hamstrings. Good, and again, making sure the toes are pointing straight forward. So we then bring your feet a little closer together. It's hard to see, but you're always trying to maintain this posture alignment. So the second and third toe are always in line with your knee and the hip bone. So that's the alignment that you're going for. And then think about lifting your tailbone up towards the ceiling. And now push into your back body. Spread the fingers and push into the backs of the hands. This is great. And now this is a fantastic exercise, not only for strengthening those extensors in our back line, but it's great for our breath. We're keeping the navel pulled in slightly so the breath is forced into our thoracic wall. And by doing this, we start to vibrate our breath on what we call the thymus gland. Our thymus gland lives on our thoracic wall and it's our gland for immunity. So if you ever feel like you're lagging in energy, this is a fantastic posture to do with this deep breath. It's invigorating all of the systems of our body. And this is our mod one. He's just pulsing the hips up and down. And his feet are forward a little bit more because we're gonna assume the knees and the hips are a little bit tighter. Great. So if you're tight into your body, like my friend Ivan is, this is a fantastic exercise to do because we're opening through all of those front muscles that in our day-to-day -day life, from driving, from sitting, our body's in a constant state of what we call forward flexion. So these muscles start to get really tight. So all we're doing here is giving them the opportunity to breathe and open. So we have more vitality, more energy. Great, let's take two more breaths, you guys. Good, this looks easy, but it's challenging. Right, Raylan? Good, take one breath here and exhale. Great, and then again, coming out of these with a lot of awareness, slowly lowering their hips to the floor. Really need to cleanse the breath after that one. Take a big inhale. Let me hear you breathe, you guys. Big exhale, let it go. Great, we're gonna stretch those hips now and get into our T-bend. So you're gonna pick your right leg up. We're gonna make a figure four. You're gonna place your heel just below the knee where the quadricep and the knee meet. And then you're gonna thread the needle. So you're gonna reach your hands between that hole that you've created and you're gonna get into the glutes and into the hips. Great. And this is our mod one here. He's leaving his left heel on the floor but is still getting a great stretch into that right glute and into that right piriformis just by activating that kinetic chain, just by pushing that left heel into the floor and getting a nice stretch by pushing that knee slightly forward as he pushes his hands down into the floor. 
Good, and again, really using the breath here, noticing if you're holding your breath as you start to move deeper into the stretch. So go inwards for a second, hear your breath, great. And now we're gonna move into an IT band stretch from here. So you're gonna release that posture, but keep that right leg lifted, and you're gonna bring that right leg all the way over your left leg, crossing your legs. Draw the belly button in, and now slowly let those knees fall to the left. Bring your left hand to the outside of your right leg. Make sure that right arm is out, shoulder height, palm face up to the ceiling. And we're just gonna get a nice stretch into the IT band. So those muscles that come from the outer side of our hip all the way down to our knee. As you inhale, think of the cadence of the breath. So think of the breath moving all the way up through to your clavicle. And now as you exhale, I want you to draw your belly button into your lower back. And as you do that, you should feel the spine rotation. You should feel the upper back rotate. Good, big exhale. Every time we practice this, it becomes innate. So every inhale and exhale is an opportunity for core engagement. And the idea is to take this practice where we're just lying on our back and make it part of our day-to-day -day life. So we're always breathing, engaging our core at the same time. Good. And now coming out of these with a lot of awareness. So as you exhale, keep the belly pulled in. Use your core to lift the legs back up through center. Uncross the legs. Good. And cleanse the breath. Take a big inhale. Big exhale. Let go. Let me hear you breathe, you guys. Big inhale. We want to open the jaw. Exhale. Great. And what we do to one side, we must do to the other. So pick that left leg up, make that figure four, thread the needle. So reach through that hole, interlace your fingers, and grab your hamstring. So again, if you have a little bit more mobility in your hips, you're gonna be able to reach all the way through the hamstring. But we wanna try to keep the tailbone on the floor here. So we keep the natural curve of the spine, and the feet are in doors I flexion. Whenever our hip is externally rotated, we want to make sure that the toes are drawn to the shin bone. This is called doors flexion. All that's doing is shortening this muscle here. This is your tibialis anterior. So if you have any kind of knee discomfort or you've ever had a knee injury, this is the safest way to protect that knee. Holding here for two more breaths. Big inhales and exhales. Great. And now we'll move into that IT band stretch. So just drop your right leg to the floor if it's not already there. Pick up that left leg, cross your left leg over your right. Again, the core is in, and you're slowly gonna let your knees come to the right this time. If this is your range of motion here, this is fantastic. You need to go inwards right now, and you need to make sure that there's nothing happening in your lower back. Find the difference between strength and stretch. Good, so again, Somebody like Raylan who has more flexibility in her spine, she's gonna have those knees all the way touching the floor. She's our mod three and she's gonna have a lot more upper body rotation. Great. Take two more breaths here. Again, think of twisting your spine as getting rid of all that extra synovial fluid, those toxins that sit between the intervertebrae discs. When we release these postures, a whole bunch of fresh blood and oxygen races towards the spine, keeps our spine really healthy and plump. Healthy spine, healthy body. Take one more breath, great. And then just slowly coming out of this, draw the navel in, protect your lower back, bring those knees back up through center, uncross your legs, cleanse the breath. Take a big inhale, let that go, exhale, good. From here, we're gonna move into supine chair pose. So you're gonna lie on your back, your knees are gonna lift up to 90 degrees. You're gonna reach your arms behind you and door as I flex the hands. Now this looks like an easy posture. The hands come to the floor, the arms come to the floor. Great. And then what we're trying to do here is keep the knees together and you're thinking of your entire front body moving towards the floor below you. So it looks like there's not much going on here, but there is. So you're really hugging your lower belly in, you're hugging the front ribs in, you're pushing your front body all the way down to the lower part of your spine. Great. And this is our mod one here. So this is great. The heels are on the floor. The knees stay a little bit wider apart. Thinking of squishing your front body all the way to your back body. Lots of work going on here, which means a lot of breath. The harder you're working, the more breath. Good. Great. Take one more breath here. Yeah, just reminding yourself that some movement is better than no movement. All right. So from here, we're just gonna go into a little spine roll. So you're gonna release your feet down onto the floor, 
Good, and you're just gonna grab your knees and you're gonna roll back and forth on your spine. So get your five-year-old hat on and just start to roll out your spine. And you're gonna pick up a little momentum here, use your core, and you're gonna eventually come in to a standing position. Support yourself if you need to, eventually making your way back into that mountain position. Did you guys make it? Yes. <laughs> All right, so starting in mountain again, feet hip distance apart, reaching those arms down by your hips towards the flexion of the hands. So resetting the feet, resetting the foundation. Close your eyes for a second, take a breath, big inhale, let me hear you breathe. Big exhale, big inhale and big exhale. We're gonna move into a warrior two series. So starting from your mountain position, you're gonna take a big step back with that right foot, reaching your arms out shoulder height, rotate the shoulders and reach those hands back in dorsiflexion. So the Warrior Series is intended, again, to feel really strong. So we're really actively pushing into the feet and we're opening through the hips. So this is a hip opening series. We're looking for alignment here. So we're looking to make sure the second and third toe, the knee and the hip are all in alignment. Now that back foot, we just wanna bring those back toes in just a little bit. And again, we wanna make sure that we're micro bending that back knee, practicing safety in all of the joints. Again, this is a warrior posture, so you wanna feel strong here. You wanna use the feet, so push those feet down into the floor. Now again, if you have a little bit less range of motion in those hips, that right hip is almost gonna point forward. And the difference here is that right foot is in less of a degree. So we're taking that pressure off of the hip, off of the inside of the knee. So this is where I need you to go inside your bodies for a second. And if you feel any pressure on the inside of that right knee, you're gonna micro bend that right knee and turn those toes to point forward a little bit more. Holding here for a few more breaths. Inhaling and exhaling. Good. So your eyes are gonna be forward over the left hand. Good, holding here, that's it. Good. And now moving into that reverse warrior. So we're gonna take a break with the leg. So just straighten that left leg, give those quads a little break. And then you're gonna bend right back into that left knee. Now from here, nothing is gonna move but the arms. You're gonna reach the right arm down and reach the left arm up. Moving into this reverse warrior. Great, so from here, again, we're using lots of activity in that left leg. So think about your left knee reaching towards your left pinky toe. And now what about the core? Keep thinking of lifting that pelvic floor wall. So engage those deep core muscle groups by drawing the navel in towards the spine and check in with your neck. Make sure there's not any pressure in your neck. So if you're a little bit tighter into the shoulder, you're gonna have less range of motion and your chin is just gonna be angling up towards that left thumb. Good, the idea here is to check in with the breath. So as we start to challenge the body physically, sometimes we start to hold the breath. So see where your breath is at. See if you can continue controlling the inhales and the exhales. Good, staying here for about three more breaths. In yoga, pretty much when you wanna come out of the posture is where we wanna stay. This is when the body starts to evolve and change. So just if you think you wanna come out right now, see if you could just hold it for a few more breaths. Notice the reaction in the body. Notice if you start to get frustrated or almost angry. See if you could just take a moment, be grateful. You're here, you have your bodies, you're strong. Holding for one more breath. And then just coming back into that warrior position. Take a little break, so just straighten that front knee. And then we're gonna move right into extended warrior. So same leg, same setup with the torso. This time you're just gonna reach that front arm forward. From here, you're gonna look over to the right. And then you're gonna bring your left arm down as you reach your right arm up towards the ceiling. And the goal here is not to collapse into the body. So you're really using your obliques, those muscles on the side of the torso to support the weight of the torso as we move closer towards the floor. So gravity wants to pull us down towards the floor. So you're thinking of a string or a rope pulling that right hand up as you actively push those feet down into the floor. Again, that kinetic energy is gonna keep the body upright, keep the core engaged. So this is our mod two here. A little bit less flexion in the hip. Good, a little bit less turn of the neck. Good, keeping the right side of the neck nice and comfortable and relaxed. Good, staying here for a few more breaths. Where's your breath? Big inhale. Let me hear you breathe. Big exhale. Again, go to your tutorials. If all of this was too much and we went through it too fast, go to the tutorials for the step-by-step. -step. And then coming out of this with a lot of awareness and a lot of control. So just pushing into that front foot, come back to warrior two, cleanse the breath. Take an inhale, let it go, big exhale. Good, relax the arms down, pivot that right foot in, so shorten the distance between your feet. Use your core, 
Step back up safely to a mountain posture. Let me hear you breathe, you guys. Take an inhale, big exhale. Good. And now going to the other side. So step the left foot back, coming into that warrior two series on the other side. Finding that distance between the feet, right knee pointing straight forward over that second and third toe, arms out, door as I flex into the hands. Good. Again, check in with your alignment. Make sure to bring your right toe in just a little bit, Raylan. We're finding the symmetry. So the knee and the second and third toe and the hip stay in one line the entire time. And that's the awesome thing about yoga. We're using this as a practice to realign the body. And as soon as we start to find this realignment in the body, it's called symmetry, our body just starts to move more efficiently and we become less prone to injury. So think of your practice as like a rehabilitation program for your body. How you doing here, Ivan? Fantastic. Good. And again, if your hips are a little bit tighter, that back foot is gonna be turned in a little bit more, accommodating the tight hip, and we're gonna have less action in the hands, a little less rotation in the shoulders. Work within your limitations. If you feel like you could open up a little bit more, move into your mod two. Let me hear you breathe, good. As soon as you hold your breath, you've gone too far, so check in, make sure that you're breathing. Good, staying for two more breaths. Great. So coming into reverse warrior, you're gonna drop that left arm down, reach the right arm up. Good, holding here. Good, so the idea here is to keep the same formation in the legs. Good, so that right knee is bent. Good, we're keeping the navel pulled in and we're breathing now into those intercostals. So breathing into that space right below the underarm. This is an opportunity to create endurance in the body, right? If we think about our ribs as expanding on every breath, we give ourselves an opportunity to have more breath volume, which is great for endurance and for recovery. Good, staying here for one more inhale and exhale. Good, and then safely just coming back into your warrior two position. Good, and then we'll set up for the extended angle. So just give your leg a little bit of a break. Straighten that right leg. Good, bend back into it. And now move your body. So reach that right arm forward. Good, and then from here, start to reach your right arm down and reach the left arm up towards the ceiling. Good. And again, the important part here is to try not to collapse into the side body. So stay lifted, keep the belly button pulled in, pull the front of the ribs in and lengthen the sternum. Good. Raylin is so chilled out here that her eyes are closed. <laughs> That's amazing. Good. Again, actively push your feet down into the floor. Keep the legs really strong. Keep the torso really strong. Good. So this looks easy, but these guys are sweating. You're working, right? Oh, yeah. What happens when we hold these static positions is we start to get into those deep core muscle groups. And though it might not look like it, the muscles are working surprisingly hard to hold this in place. Good. Take two more breaths. Good, one more breath. All right, and then just safely coming back out. So come back into your warrior two position, take a breath. Big inhale, you guys, let me hear you breathe. Big exhale, let it go. Good, and then safely coming out. So straighten that front leg, heel toe the back foot in, turn both toes to face the front, and just step back into your mountain position. Let's cleanse the breath. Take a big inhale, big exhale, relax. Good, so again, making sure you have the alignment here. So step that left foot forward slightly. Good, look down at your toes, you guys. Again, we wanna set this up so you're practicing alignment just in this foundation posture. So look down, toes, knees, hips are stacked, hands by the side, doors, I flexion of the hands. Let's go. Inhale, reach the arms up overhead. Big exhale, slight bend into the knees, hinge at the hips. Inhale, pulse halfway up, and then exhale, come into that plank position. Holding here just for a breath, take an inhale, and then as you exhale, lower down towards the floor. Inhale, come into your spinal extension. Watch the lower back here. Make sure you're modifying. And then exhale, squeeze the hip bones together. Use your core, come into that downward facing dog. Take a breath here, big inhale. Let me hear you breathe, you guys. Big exhale. So Ivan, just bring your hands forward just a little bit. 
you're really long in your body, you need to have a nice space between your levers here. Even bring your hands forward a little bit more. This is mod one. So we don't want to be really crunchy between the hands and the feet. Good. And then we're going to bend into the knees a little more. That's going to take the pressure off the hamstrings. Now lift the hips up to the ceiling. And you'll see that we get a lot more movement into the spine. So if your spine is rounding, you need to lengthen the distance between your hands and your feet, and you need to bend the knees a lot. Great. Setting up for our low lunge series. So look forward. We're going to step the left foot through the hands. And you're going to bring your right knee down onto the floor, reaching your arms up overhead, coming into a nice lunge position here. Good. Doors, I flexion of the hands, shoulders, and external rotation. Good. Spreading the fingers nice and wide. Good. Drawing the shoulders down and back. So again, try not to collapse into the hips here. So even if you're super flexible, it's easy to just kind of hang out into the joints because the body has that range of motion. But with Ray Lynn, we're really going to practice engaging the core and lifting out of the hips. Good. And then finding that alignment, so make sure your toes are pointing forward. Again, check in with that front foot. We're looking for symmetry. So the second and third toe are in line with the knee. Good. Arms are up overhead. It's like you're holding two trays of fruit up above you. Good. Eyes are forward. This is your mod two. So even while you're holding these static postures, think about your eyes. So as your eyes are just looking forward, see if you could see everything you possibly can in your 180. And just notice if you're holding any tension in your jaw. See if you can relax the jaw, relax the eyes. This is your mod one. Beautiful. Take one more breath. And now we'll move into that rotating lunge. So reach your arms out in front of you. You're going to shift your body weight forward just slightly and then draw your left elbow back like a bow and arrow and then open your arm from that position and then take a little peek over your left shoulder. So again, the idea here is to keep the hips and the pelvis symmetrical. So your two hip bones are pointing straight forward and we're just rotating around the axis of the spine. And now really using the breath here. So as you inhale, I want you to push your feet down into the floor. And now as you exhale, draw the belly in and feel how much more range of motion you get in your spine. So again, we use this breath and this core integration to move and rotate the spine. So take an inhale, exhale, squeeze the belly in and feel how you get more rotation in your spine. Do you feel that, Ryan? Yeah. Oh my That's gosh, great. look at that. <laughs> Once more, take a big inhale. Big exhale, use your core to find movement, beautiful. And then coming out of this with a lot of awareness, so shift your eyes forward, bring your left arm back, so it's parallel to the right. Take a breath in between, big inhale, relax, exhale, good. Coming into a hamstring stretch from here. So just bring your weight back into your right knee and extend your left leg forward. And from here, this might be a great place to stay. So right now you're getting a stretch into your hamstring. You're just gonna stay here. Otherwise, we're gonna reach the arms forward, doors, I flex the hands, and you're just gonna tilt forward, getting a nice stretch into the back of the hamstrings, moving into our runner's lunge. Great. Now again, if those hamstrings are a little bit tighter, you need to check in, really check in with the knee here. Make sure there's no pulling in or around the knee. We just wanna stretch into the back of the leg. This is where we really need to practice our limitations. Right, taking ego completely out of the question. Here in Mod 1, the knee is not fully extended with less bend in the hips and no dorsiflexion flexion of the hands. Take two more breaths here. Good. And this is tricky. We're still challenging the balance. So really think about the core and think about your breath. The breath is going to keep you here. Big inhale. You're doing great. Big exhales. Nice. And then coming out of this with a lot of awareness. So slowly lifting the torso back up right to center, placing that left foot onto the floor, plant your hands and safely step back to a plank position. Once you get here, cleanse the breath. Take a big inhale, let it go, exhale. And then we'll cycle through. So slowly lowering down, keep those elbows tucked into the ribs, chest to floor. Inhale into your full upward dog or baby cobra. And then exhale, push right back into your downward facing dog. Once you get here, take a big inhale, let it go, big exhale. So believe it or not, downward dog is a resting position. So at one point in your yoga practice, you're gonna feel 
like you could stay here for a long time. This is your mod one, this is Ivan. Good, breathing and enjoying his downward dog. Good. And then we'll do all of that on the other side. So let's step the opposite foot forward. So step the right foot forward, setting up for your low lunge. Knee comes down onto the floor, reaching those arms up overhead. This is your mod three. So there's a longer space or distance between the feet. There's more dorsiflexion of the hands. This is what we're working towards. If it's not here today, that's awesome because you have a reason to come back and see me. <laughs> Good, again, keeping everything active. So again, really pushing those feet down into the floor. Good, eyes are forward. Good, back of the neck, tuck the chin just a little bit and holding here. So the idea with this posture is we're getting a nice stretch into the front of the quad and into the hip flexors. So from all of our day-to-day -day movements, just sitting, driving, whatever it is that you do, most of us are in this position all day long. So we're really trying to open up through those front lines, opening through the hips. Good. Giving ourselves a little range of motion here. So this is your mod one. Even in mod one though, see if you could spread the fingers. All of these mechanics in the hand relate to all of these different muscles in between our shoulder blades and into our pecs. Good, take two more breaths. Beautiful, one more breath. And now setting up for that rotating lunge. So just bring your arms in front of you, door as I flex the hand. From here, you're gonna draw your right elbow back like a bow and arrow, and then you're gonna open through that right hand and just shift your gaze to where it will go. Try not to crank your neck back. Again, pay attention to what feels good in your body. And now we're gonna use the breath to move the body. So take an inhale, push your feet into the floor, and then as you exhale, draw your belly button into your lower spine and feel how that moves the upper body. This is your mod three. She's gonna get lots of rotation into her spine, but we're concentrating not dumping into the hips. So realign your hips, come out of it a little bit. That's it, again, go for accuracy. Make sure those right toes are pointing forward. And this is fine. If you need to readjust and reset up your posture, do it. There's no ego, there's no race, there's no finish line with yoga. The best thing about yoga is every day, your body is a different body. So this gives us the opportunity to kind of go inwards and work in the moment. Good, take one more breath. This is your mod two. Exhale, let's find a little bit more rotation. Awesome. And then coming out with a lot of awareness. So look forward, bring your right hand to join your left and cleanse the breath. Take an inhale, everyone. Let all of that go. Big exhale. Great, now setting up for the runner's lunge. So releasing your hands down by your hips, Start to stand on that left knee and the right leg is extended in front of you. Reach those arms out in front of you, doors, I flexion of the hands. And then you're gonna start to tilt forward from the hips, getting right into the back of that leg. Good. And again, work within your own limitations. Raylin's got these nice long hamstrings, so she's gonna find a lot more depth here. Try not to get so low. Keep thinking symmetry into the body. Good. Holding here and now using the breath. So right away, I saw you, you were holding your breath. If you're holding your breath, you need to come out of the posture. You need to mod down, right? Check in, you guys. Take two more breaths. This is awesome. Are you getting a stretch here, Ivan? Yes, I am. Perfect. Are you smiling? I'm trying to. <laughs> Good, it takes lots of concentration, lots of balance. You're doing great. Take one more breath. Good. And then coming out with more awareness. So slowly letting the hands come down by the hips. Good, bending that front knee, plant your hands and step back into your plank position. And we're gonna cycle through once more, keeping the body nice and warm. So lower down towards the floor, take an inhale, come into your upward facing dog, into your spinal extension, shoulders down and back, back of the neck long. Exhale into your downward facing dog, good. Once you get to down dog, take a big inhale, everyone. Open the jaw, ha ah, sound, exhale. Again, big inhale, let it go, big exhale. And then transitioning down onto your knees for another awesome spinal extension movement. So we're gonna move into the camel. Again, with these spinal extensions, we're gonna use the core to get there. So I'm gonna be giving you a lot of cues to make sure that you're protecting your lower back. So we're gonna start in a kneeling position. Knees hip distance apart, feet hip distance apart. So just peek over, do a little shoulder check. And you wanna make sure your heels are directly behind the middle of your butt cheeks. 
And then from here, we're just gonna start to reach our right hand towards our right heel as we reach the left hand up towards the ceiling. And then you're gonna lift out of your hips and slowly start to imagine coming over a barrel behind you. So we're getting this nice movement into the upper part of the spine. Good. Now the idea here is to not hang out in your lower back. So you wanna think about lifting up and over so that you're not crunching into your lower back. You're extending, you're looking up, and you're breathing into that left body. Again, this is our mod one over here, and this is fantastic. We're still getting some spinal extension. We're getting some movement. We're spreading the fingers, and we're active in the entire body. Good, take two more breaths here. And now to come out of this, come out with a lot of awareness. I want you to draw your belly button in first, protect the lower back, and then release that left hand, release the right hand, come through neutral. Everyone, breathe. Take a big inhale, relax, exhale. And then we'll do the other side. So reach that right arm up. Good, reach behind you, maybe for your left heel, maybe for your calf, maybe you're just reaching the hand back, that's fine. Work within your own limitations. And now I need you to go inside your body. If you feel any kind of crunching in your lower back at all, this is where you detach from your ego and you say, I'm gonna give my body a little gift today. I'm gonna listen to it, right? So if you're here and you feel crunching, you're coming and you're modifying, either into your mod one or into your mod two. Same benefit, you're still getting movement in your body. Breathe here for two more breaths. Beautiful. One more breath. Nice and relaxed. And then coming out with safety, draw your belly button in, let your right hand come down by your side and cleanse the breath. Take an inhale, everybody. Big exhale, let go. Good. And then we'll come into a child's pose from here. So bringing the knees wide apart, big toes are touching. You're gonna reach your arms forward, spreading the fingers nice and wide, placing the forehead down onto the floor. Once you get here, you're just gonna rock your forehead from left to right. If it's touching the floor, massaging through the front of the skull. Good, releasing through the neck. Good. Taking two more deep breaths here. Big inhale, let everything go. Relax your jaw, exhale. Take a big inhale. One more guys, exhale. From your child's pose, making your way up into downward facing dog. So just lift those hips up and back and make your way into that upside down V position. Good. Once you get here, again, just cleanse the breath. Take a big inhale, big exhale. Remember, think about your form first. Always watch that you're doing each exercise correctly. If you're feeling really good, try mod three and challenge yourself. If you're feeling like it's a little bit too much, go to your mod one. Again. So again, just holding here for a few more breaths. And we'll go into this final set of postures. All right, so transitioning down onto your hands and your knees, we're gonna make our way into a reverse table position. So you're gonna come onto your butts, bring your toes forward and reach your hands back behind you. So ideally, in mod three, the fingertips are gonna point straight back. And if those shoulders are a little bit tight, your hands are just gonna turn more out to the sides. Pick your toes up off the floor and see if you can lift your hips up. So right away, if those shoulders are screaming, you're gonna to listen to your body and you're gonna leave the hips dropping down towards the floor a little bit. So this is an awesome opportunity to work within your boundaries, right? If you know you have tight hips and tight shoulders, you're just slowly lifting the hips up. You're giving those shoulders a little bit of a stretch and then you're letting the hips come back down towards the floor. This is mod one, this is Ivan. He's doing a great job. How are their shoulders feeling? Tight. Good. Tight. Again, but he's breathing. So he's able to be here because we can hear his breath. Right, holding here for a few more breaths. Great. Again, if you need to take a break at any time, you're coming down. You're letting your hips come to the floor and you're just gonna chill out for a second. One day, Ryan, after he practices this Evolve Yoga for a few more weeks, we're looking one day to have the knees and the hips and the shoulders in one line. That way we know that the front body is opening and that the back body, the glutes 
and the hamstrings and all the muscles between the shoulder blades are strong enough to support that front body. If we look at our mod three here, this is the benchmark. This is what we're working towards. So the shoulders, the hips and the knees are in one line and the hamstrings and the glutes and the muscles in the back are supporting that open front line. This is beautiful. Back of the neck is long, no stress on the neck. Take two more breaths, you guys, you're doing great. Big inhale, big exhale. Really use your feet, push your feet into the floor. And then coming out of this slow transition, let your hips slowly come down towards the floor and just cleanse the breath. Take a big inhale, big exhale. Good. Coming into that boat position, you're gonna come with your arms wide apart, thumbs lifted up towards the ceiling, and you're gonna see if you can maybe lift your knees up off the floor. Maybe one day you get those legs up and you're just peeking over your toes, getting the spine nice and long. Again, if you need to modify, modify. The most important part is that you're just moving your body, you're breathing, and as you're holding this challenging position, you're gonna go inwards, you're gonna be grateful for a second, don't be angry at me, just keep breathing. Be grateful for breath and movement. Take two more breaths, you guys, you're doing great. Good. And then if you need a break, come out of the posture and we'll go into it one more time. So lift those legs back up. Raylin's just gonna stay here. She's really given herself this challenge today. This is your mod three. Shoulders are down and back, she's working really hard. Imagine a string pulling your chest up, the belly button stays pulled in. There's lots of action in the feet. Doors, I flex the feet. That's gonna keep the quads nice and engaged. The back of the legs are gonna stay long. Look how beautiful she looks. You look good, girl. That's gonna keep you here for a few more breaths. Big inhales and big exhales. Great. And then let's come out. So take a breath. Good, and just chill out for a second. Good job, you guys. Take a big inhale, big exhale. You get to chill out now, right? <laughs> That's a great word at this point, chill out. All right, come to lie on your back. We're gonna do a supine knee twist. So we're gonna get into those rotators. Your arms are gonna come out again, shoulder height. We're gonna pick those feet up off the floor. Knees are gonna stay together. And we're gonna slowly let our knees fall to the left. Again, the key word, in case you missed it, was slowly, don't rush your body. As we start to move into these sensitive muscles around our lower back, we need to find more awareness. So take a moment, go inwards, and make sure you're practicing safely. And this is fantastic. We're still getting rotation in the spine. We're getting a nice stretch into the QL, into the muscles on the side of the leg. Good. And the awesome thing about twisting, even while you're just lying here and you feel like you're not doing much, we're actually stimulating the ascending colon and the descending colon. So we're working our digestive system. So just by the breath moving through the body, all these different systems of the body get invigorated just by the way the body is positioned. So take two more breaths here, big inhales and exhales. And then we'll transition to the other side. So draw the navel in, use your core. This is your mod two. And then as you exhale, let your knees fall to the other side. Spine twisting is an awesome opportunity to go inward. So close your eyes for a second and just follow the cadence of your breath. So hear your inhales, maybe notice how long your breath is, and then find your exhale. And while you're lying here, just think about the overall benefit of the yoga program. You're allowing yourself more range of motion, more flexibility. You're giving yourself the opportunity to take time, go inwards. We're creating all of these different muscle memories in the body. And what happens is we take these muscle memories and we apply them to the rest of the Evolve program into your strength, your agility, and your core programs. And all of a sudden, everything just becomes a little bit more easy because you're articulating breath and movement and you're joining them together. Even though it doesn't feel like you're doing much, there's big changes happening. So draw the belly button back in, bring those knees back up to center, and we're gonna go back to the other side. So again, maybe just finding a little bit more range of motion this time. Good, getting that mobility into the upper spine. So let me hear you breathe, big inhale. Find that full breath, big exhale. Find the bottom of the breath. And then come back through center, draw the belly button in, knees up through center, and we'll go once more to the right. Good, again, really now thinking about that movement into the upper back by just the breath alone. So you're breathing all the way up, inhale. And then as you exhale, you're drawing the belly button into the lower back. Great, you guys, one more breath. Inhaling and exhaling. 
And then using your core, so draw the navel in, float those knees back up to center. Cleanse the breath. Take a big inhale. Let it go. Big exhale. Let those feet come towards the floor. Good, and we'll come into that hamstring stretch. So just lying on your back. You're going to reach your right leg up towards the ceiling, and we're going to reach for the hamstring. Raylene over there might grab her calf. So again, check in with the back of your leg. Make sure it feels safe. And then maybe you start to extend that left leg forward. From here, you're going to gently pull the leg towards you, getting a nice, safe stretch into the back of that leg. Again, if for one second you feel any pulling in around the knee, you need to let go of your ego, bend the knee a little bit, and practice there. It's important that you just accept where you are right now, accept that maybe your hamstrings are a little bit tighter, and that by practicing this yoga program, they will stretch, the body will change, and it will evolve. You just have to give yourself the time. You need to be patient with your body and keep practicing. Just keep coming back and practicing. Great, and then just slowly, with control, release that right leg back down towards the floor, and we'll go to the other side. So start to extend the left leg up. Reach for the back of the leg, maybe the back of the calf. And really important here that the feet stay in doors eye flexion. So even that bottom leg, keep it active. Imagine that you're pushing it into a wall in front of you. And the whole theory here is opposition. So by doors eye flexing the foot, we start to engage all of the muscles in the front of the leg. So the tibialis anterior, the quadricep. And in theory, when we engage one muscle, the opposite muscle releases. So this is your mod two. We're just reaching for the hamstring. The heel bone is lifting up and we're getting a nice stretch into the back of the leg. If you're flying in an airplane, you're sitting at your office desk, whatever you're doing, if you just doors I flex your feet, you can get a nice hamstring stretch. So no excuses to not stretch your hamstrings. Take two more breaths. And we're going to go back to the other side. So let the navel come in towards the spine, protect your lower back, let that foot come to the floor. And go back to the right side and see if you have a little bit more flexibility this time. Lift that leg up towards the ceiling. And this is awesome. This is what most of us look like, right? We have these tighter bodies and we're still getting a nice safe stretch into the back of the leg, but we're working within our body's limitations. This is our mod one and we're happy just that we have hamstrings. <laughs> right, Ivan? <laughs> Good. And then you can come back. You can keep checking in with your body, right? Maybe the next time, maybe after a few weeks, we get to mod two, where you're extending your left leg and increasing the stretch. And look at Raylin. Sometimes you're just born with long hamstrings, right? It's all about working with what you're born with. Good, and we'll switch legs. So slowly let the right leg come back down. And let's try the other side. Lift that left leg up. Second time stretching, you might have a little bit more range of motion this time. Maintaining that doors eye flexion. And even here, trying to maintain symmetry in the body. So trying to keep those toes pointing up towards the ceiling so the pelvis stays in neutral position. So we protect the back of the hamstring as we stretch it. Good, heel bones lifting up. Good, and then you're breathing. So every time you inhale, think of breathing into the space that you're stretching. And then every time you exhale, just see if you could find a little bit more movement and a little bit of relaxation in the face. Take two more breaths, you guys. Big inhale. Let me hear you breathe. Big exhale. Great. And then just slowly, again, coming out of these with a lot of control. Don't let your hamstrings bounce away. Bend the knee. Safely place that foot onto the floor. Take a breath, you guys. Big inhale. Maybe shake out the legs. Exhale. Great. And then eventually just making your way up into a seated position. So come up to seating. Come onto your bums. Get up. <laughs> if you fell asleep, Wake up! <laughs> All right, we're gonna come into a cobbler position. So you're gonna bring the soles of the feet together. And your knees, if you have really tight hips like me, are gonna be pointing straight up towards the ceiling. If you have a little bit more flexibility, look to our mod three, your knees are gonna be closer towards the floor. You're gonna reach your arms up overhead doors, I flexion of the hands. And then from here, you're gonna slowly just start to lean forward, getting a nice stretch into the groin. Again, if your hips are tight, you can even bring your feet forward a little bit more, like Ivan's gonna show us over there in mod one. And the hands will come behind, and you still get a nice, easy stretch into the groin here. So again, we're trying to stretch the adductors, those muscles in the center of your legs, good, while maintaining that integrity and that length in the spine. 
So this posture, talk about humble pie, right? If we have really tight hips here, we just have to try to stay and breathe and not get angry. We hold a lot of stress in our hips. And for a lot of us, this feels like a lot of work to stay here. So you're doing great. Just go back to your breath. Your mod two, the arms aren't gonna be straight. There's gonna be a bend in the elbows. Good, the feet are gonna be farther away. And the knees most likely won't come towards the floor. And they might never come to the floor. Structurally, we're just all built differently. If your hips rotate inwards, you may never get your knees to the floor. It's all about stretching and working within your own range of motion and limitations. Nice long spine here. Good, take one more breath, great. And then slowly transitioning back up to a seated position. So use your breath. Take a breath, you guys, cleanse, relax the hands. Big inhale, let it go, big exhale. <laughs> Good. And then coming into this QL stretch. So we're gonna get into these muscles that surround the spine. We've been using them a lot in our Evolve program, so it's now time to stretch them. So your legs are gonna come wide like a V. Again, if those hamstrings are tight, you're just gonna bend the knees. You're gonna reach your arms out shoulder height, open the palms. First, we're gonna rotate the spine. So you're gonna twist over to the left. You're gonna bend your right elbow, place your right elbow on the inside of your right knee, and then reach that left arm up towards the ceiling. Maybe the fingertips come behind the ears, and you're lifting the chest up towards the ceiling. Good, so the idea here is again to get into these muscles. These guys, it's called your QL, your quadratus lumborum. They're the muscles that surround, they're, they're like your, your back abs. And then while you're twisting, you're thinking of pushing that opposite butt cheek down into the floor. This is your mod one. Now he gave me a nice little grunt, which makes me think that he may be enjoying this. <laughs> so the breath cadence is here. You're inhaling all the way up through to your clavicle, right below your neck. Exhale, the navel's pulling in, and that's going to give you that rotation in the spine and that nice stretch. Great. Now for mod two, the legs are a little bit straighter, a little bit wider apart. The fingers are still behind the ear. Feet are doors I flex, so really try to activate through the feet. Good. And bind the cadence of breath. Keep breathing. Inhaling and exhaling. Let your breath move your body, right? It's a beautiful thing. And this is our mod three. We got wide open legs. We got a lot of range of motion into the upper body and into the backs of the legs. We can still get her a little bit deeper though. Breathe all the way up here in. And then exhale, navel to spine. Beautiful. And now coming out with a lot of awareness. Draw the belly button in. Good, come back through to your center position. Arms out, shoulder height, palms open. Cleanse the breath. Take a big inhale. Big exhale, let go. And we'll twist to the other side. So twist to the right, draw your belly in, rotate around the axis of the spine, and then bring your left elbow on the inside of your left knee. Bring your fingertips maybe behind the ear up towards the ceiling. And as you lift the chest up towards the ceiling, you're anchoring your hip down into the floor. Again, just releasing the tension that surrounds the lower back. Most of us at some time in our life have had lower back pain. So if this is something that you've suffered from or have chronic back pain, this is something that you can do on a daily basis to release the muscles around that tense back. Good, this is your mod three. She's in full range of motion here. Good. Again, if that's too much, we're working to get there. Maybe we just stay here. This is your mod two. The knees are bent to protect the tight backs of the legs. The spine is still lifting, we're breathing in. Every exhale, you're drawing the belly in and giving that spine an opportunity for rotation. Think opposition, you're lifting up as you're anchoring down. You feel that? Absolutely. Good. Three more breaths. Big inhale and exhale. Breathe all the way in. Belly in, exhale. Awesome. And then coming out with a lot of awareness, very slowly. Careful with the lower back. Bring yourself back to center. Take a breath, everybody. Take a big inhale. Let it go. Big exhale. Great. And then just bringing the feet back together. We're gonna move into another twist for the spine. So starting with your feet in dorsiflexion, toes lifting up towards the ceiling, you're gonna bend into your right knee and you might just stay here. This might be your range of motion. Maybe you start to pick that right leg up and over. 
We're gonna create a nice long spine first. So you're gonna interlace the fingers and you're gonna think about drawing the knee towards you so you get a nice long spine here. From here, you're gonna hook your right hand onto the outside of your right knee. Your left elbow is gonna come around that right knee and you're gonna rotate around the axis of the spine, twisting over towards the right. Great. So the idea here is to really anchor through the sits bones. Those are those bones at the bottom of your bum. So you're gonna push them down into the floor in the inhale, and then as you exhale, again, think of that core cue, that breath mechanic driving the movement of the spine. Maybe today you're just hugging the knee into the chest, and we're just going for a nice long spine today. This is your mod one. Good. Keep thinking of action in that left foot. Keep drawing the toes to the shin bone. Good, and maybe we find a few degrees of rotation into that upper back. Good. Take two more breaths. And now we're gonna take an inhale. You're gonna actively push your right big toe down into the floor. That's your first point of kinetic movement. And then as you exhale, feel how much movement you get into the spine as you do it. This is your mod two. So even when you think you're in your full range of motion, we start to use all these breath and core techniques to find more movement into the body. Good, take one more breath, big inhale and exhale. And then just slowly unwinding the spine. So look forward, take a breath here, breathe, inhale, let go, exhale, and then we'll change sides. So draw that left foot in, doors, I flex the right foot, maybe pick that left leg up and over. Hug your torso in so you get a nice long spine. Hook the right elbow around the left knee, and then just start to spin around the axis of the spine. So the most important part here is that we're not twisting the spine with a flexed spine. So if your spine is rounded, you need to come down a modification. So maybe you're just here and you're just working on building strength into the spine. You're just working at sitting up straight first. Once we learn this postural correction, we can then start to twist the spine. Good. And again, not forcing the movement. So really allow your breath to move your body. This is your mod two. The knee is hugging into the chest, the spine is long. The lower back isn't twisting at all. We're just rotating through the upper thoracic spine. That's where all your mobility is in your spine for rotation. Good, take two more breaths, big inhale. She's gonna push into her left foot and find a lot more rotation in her spine. That's it, exhale. Beautiful, take one more breath, good. And then just slowly come back through center. Release the hand from the knee and change. Just uncross your legs and cleanse the breath. Take a big inhale, you guys. Let all of that go. <sighs> big exhale. All right, we're gonna go into a plow position. So again, you need to put your three-year-old hat on <laughs> and we're gonna have some fun. So come to lie on your back. And then from here, you're gonna start to lift your knees up and see if you could reach your legs back behind you. Good. And again, modification one, you're gonna lie here and you're just gonna roll through the spine. So just kind of getting the momentum to one day put the legs right behind your head. So again, as we do this, we're thinking about stretching through the whole back body. So we're opening through that whole back fascia line. Good. And just by breathing here, we're compressing the throat and our thyroid gland lives here. This is our gland for metabolism. So we can even increase our metabolism or the efficiency of our metabolism just by doing proper breathing here in this position. And that's the beautiful thing about yoga is all these postures and all these movements were designed to invigorate all systems of the body. And by the breath moving, the circulatory system, the lymphatic system, all the systems of the body just start to work together more efficiently, which just promotes overall health. So whatever you're doing, you're doing something fantastic for your body just by being here. Breathe in here for a few more breaths. Great, and now coming out of this with a lot of awareness. So draw your belly button in, and then just slowly roll out of this as slow as you possibly can. That's it, try not to spring out of the position. Great. And then from here, we're gonna come into that final relaxation. So let the legs fall open, hands by the hips, palms face up. Let me hear you breathe, you guys. Take a big inhale. Let go, big exhale. Big inhale, big belly breath. Big exhale. So as you move into your relaxation, 
only think about your belly breath. Our parasympathetic nerves connect at the bottom of the abdominal wall. These nerves connect to our right brain and our right brain is what elicits this relaxation response. So just by belly breathing, we get all of the benefits of relaxation. Heart rate lowers, cholesterol, blood pressure, cortisol levels, that stress hormone that basically impedes our body from functioning properly. So give yourself permission just to be here. Take one minute out of your day and take as many deep belly breaths as you possibly can. So slowly just coming out of this position, rolling to your right side, coming to lie in a fetal position just for a breath. And then when you're ready, just coming up into a seated position. And once you're there, congratulations, you guys. You just finished the extended Yoga Evolve One program. If you felt like it wasn't challenging enough or you were doing Mod 3 the whole time, maybe you want to come back and try the Evolve Yoga 2. If you felt like maybe it was just a little bit too much, stick with the Express and with the Standard. Either way, you did fantastic. You're moving your body. Be grateful. I'm Jana, and this is Evolve. Thank you.